As the final weekend approached, fans were treated to a delicious plateful of tennis action. First on the night 11 menu was a quarterfinal match pitting the 12th seed, South African Wayne Ferreira, against Michael Chang. With both players hungry to advance to the semis, it was Chang who took the first bite and the first set. Ferreira, like Washington before him, would be no easy match for Chang. The players traded sets, with Ferreira gutting out the fourth despite his second U.S. Open injury in as many years. Last year, he couldn't play on. This year, he did, despite the pain. But in the fifth set, as his wounded opponent weakened, Chang grew stronger. The speed and intensity which has become Chang's trademark carried him to a spot in the U.S. Open semifinals. While the grandstand action was superb, night 11's main course was served up on the stadium. Coming in, neither Stefan Edberg or coach Tony Picard could have fathomed how smoothly things would begin against longtime rival Ivan Lendl. For two sets, Edberg had things entirely his way, and he did not try to mask his exuberance. Distraught and staggered, Lendl dug in, desperate to stave off the knockout punch. In set three, he was successful. But in set number four, the Swede returned to the attack mode that had rendered Lendl helpless earlier in the match. Edberg collected enough match points to signal the end and then stalled. On the very edge of elimination, Lendl saved them all. This was the fourth. And it left Stefan Edberg muttering as he headed back to the baseline to try again. Amazingly, Lendl won the set 7-5. And if Edberg was frustrated, he must have been boiling when the rain came and postponed the completion of the match until the next day. With a semifinal spot at stake, the 27th career meeting between these two stars came down to a single set. And before it was over, a single inch would distinguish the winner from the man going home. Edberg attacked. Lendl responded. And Edberg attacked some more. Into the tiebreak they went, with the points even at two. The tennis god smiled at Edberg. The let cord was the impetus Edberg needed. Even those closest to Lendl could sense that. After match point, Edberg cleared the net by more than his pivotal shot and breathed a sigh of relief at finally closing out an opponent who seemed down and out more than 12 hours earlier while Lendl offered a sarcastic overview of Edberg's future. Who's going to win this tournament? Not Edberg, he doesn't play the way he used to, he just bounced the ball. <laughs> First up, Stefan Edberg versus Michael Chang. As they took the court, they had barely an inkling that they were embarking on a match that began in late morning and stretched to late afternoon and would become the match of the 1992 U.S. Open. The obligatory early feeling out process soon gave way to the seesaw battle that would dominate the match. Late in set one, Edberg recorded the day's first knockdown. But the American was hardly down and out. Chang dusted himself off, one set one, and took the early advantage. Edberg, whose taxed body was on stadium court for the third day in a row, rebounded to win set two. And by the time both participants were consumed with set three, it was clear that something special was dawning. So 
special that the respective families became caught up in the tension, though they showed it in different ways. On it went. A contrast in styles. Edberg staking claim to the net, daring Chang to hit it by it. Two sets to one, Edberg. Back came Chang. The drama escalated. Chang elevated his game and for the third match in a row backed Edberg into a precarious position. A fifth set and a three-love lead for the American. Edberg was not impressed. Chang squandered his lead but had one last great chance to extend the madness. Serving at 5-4 in the fifth, Edberg faced a critical break point and met the challenge like a champion. The crisis passed, and two points later, Edberg served at match point. After five hours, 26 minutes, he had won the U.S. Open's longest match ever and was one step away from defending his crown. He achieved something almost unthinkable, three consecutive wins after being down a break in the fifth and deciding set. All feats worth celebrating with coach Tony Picard. Any time when you can come back from a break in the fifth set, it's a good effort, I think. Uh, but to do it three matches in a row, it's, it's extremely good. Not, I don't think many players can do that. And I think that proves a lot uh, that I've at least got good character. And, you know, I'm fighting out there. Pete Sampras and Jim Courier. Two Americans poised and determined to win in Super Saturday's finale. It was Sampras who played outstanding tennis early on, actually dominating the top-seeded Courier throughout the first set, which he won handily six games to one. Courier, playing as he had throughout this U.S. Open, battled back to win the second set. But from that point forward, not even the cool of the evening could help Jim Courier find relief from the high degree of success from this former U.S. Open champion. All aspects of Sampras's multifaceted game were working well as he pressed the action and cruised to an easy third set victory, six games to two. As Sampras built a commanding lead in the fourth set, his victory seemed imminent. But as the match's end neared, Sampras was suddenly afflicted by a stomach ailment. Doubled over in pain, Sampras struggled to complete his victory. This was match point. As he struggled to reach the net for the customary handshake, Sampras' status for the next day's final was left very much in doubt. 